quiet, and that's part of the problem. No sunspots, no solar flares, coronal holes turned away, and their solar wind streams waning. The closest to a sunspot we've got is the active region on the south. These bright fields lack sunspot umbra beneath them, however, and will remain in focus for such development. Speaking of the solar wind, indeed we see the full last coronal hole stream barely touch the modest range and is already falling back in intensity. This is driving ultra quiet and extended periods of geomagnetic silence and we're now over 18 hours of KP0. We're at a strong cosmic ray health alert. It could hit severe today. We will come back to this for much more detail at the end of the video. But right now, we're contrasting the record cold and snow that is still pounding the U.S. due to a heavily bent jet stream pulling Arctic air southward into its dip with the record heat that baked Florida to end the month. Jet never got down that far, and boy did they know it. Brunt ice shelf up next as a Halloween crack appeared off the coast of the Waddell Sea. ESA has that one, and it is linked below. One more at Antarctica as the record low ozone hole for 2019 is examined in even greater detail here by NOAA. This article also linked below. And with that, let's head to outer space, starting with the microlensing discovery of an exoplanet. This is not like the long-range lensing astronomy. These are much harder and take only a second or two to occur. They have spotted a Neptune-sized planet coming together at an Earth orbital distance around its host star, and it's right here in the Milky Way. Up next is a sigh and opportunity as w First, which was conceptualized and funded many years ago, is indeed getting ready to take its latest run at a dark matter discovery. They are aiming to do wide field surveys and understand the galactic rotation problem, which of course we suggest does not really exist. They have found luminous matter halos extending much farther than expected. They are co-rotating with the galaxies and are fed by spiral filament currents from the cosmic web. For more on why the future looks different in astronomy, head over to spaceweathernews.com slash plasma or look below the video for the Plasma Cosmology movie. Up next is a very cool examination of detonation in the cosmic sense. Here on Earth, rapid burns need containment of the energy waves to upgrade to a detonation, but how does that happen in stars where there are no walls or confinement? Well, I will quickly state that Dr. Robitaille's shell lattice idea might provide those walls. Nevertheless, their models here got it to work using only plasma turbulence. This is the second means of creating that cosmic explosion, or nova, down in a lab-scale setting. You can either dump material into the corona, or you can create a plasma instability. Let's take a moment with Hubble's view of a mega-galaxy cluster. Dozens to hundreds, if not thousands of galaxies and their thousands to tens of thousands of dwarf satellites grouped together in the constellation of the swordfish. Gorgeous. It's places like these that produce the cosmic rays we see here on Earth, which again are in high supply today with such a low KP index. If we do get 24 full hours of zeros here, a full zero day, know that no space weather is as statistically correlated with cardiac, autoimmune, and mental effects as are the cosmic ray zero days, not even major solar flares and geomagnetic storms. A bit of background. Cosmic rays are not gamma or x-ray light, but actual particles. Electron stripped atomic nuclei of all the elements have been discovered, including relatively wild isotopes. And presuming one doesn't hit your DNA, they are destined to hit particles in the atmosphere or perhaps even the mantle if high energy enough, and then break out in electrifying and ionizing cascades of particles that are also shown to trigger lightning, cloud nucleation, and mantle viscosity changes. As you can see here, we continue to be at record high cosmic rays. It was last summer that we called out the modern cosmic ray maximum, and not much has changed. We will expect a dip during the upcoming sunspot maximum of the 2020s, but otherwise it's up and up we go. Earth to Sky Calculus October reading was the highest they have ever received. The same was showing in Japan, you might recall, until that was taken offline temporarily this summer. They are pushing the definition of temporary these days, by the way. Either way, we're here, it has begun, there are major weather, volcanic and health effects to these cosmic rays, and today we are hoping to avoid that full 24 hours of zeros on the KP index.